Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you today about a, well, a little sneak peek about my upcoming book that's more on gluten. Uh, we wrote The Gluten Effect several years ago and um, people ask me, why gluten? Why more on that? Um, really because a lot more needs to be said. There's certainly a lot of research that has occurred since we last wrote the book, but unfortunately not a lot of inroads have been made as far as uh, how good we are at diagnosing celiac disease as an example. It used to be that uh, only around nine or ten percent were diagnosed and it's it's not that much better now a full decade later so instead of maybe 90 or 95 percent remaining undiagnosed we're down to maybe the high 80s so not great. Um, we could be doing a lot lot better and and then of course there's gluten sensitivity and we don't have a solid blood test for that. If you go to a doctor and say, take my blood and tell me definitively if I have gluten sensitivity, that test doesn't exist yet either. There's certainly uh, some tests that we use here at the clinic that, that help make the case. You know, it really is about making a case, whether it's celiac or gluten sensitivity. There's a few different factors you need to take into consideration. But the little sneak peek I want to tell you about today was um, actually speaks to uh, how poor we are at diagnosing celiac disease. And that goes to, uh, if you know anything about celiac disease, one of um, the diagnostic criteria has been what's called a positive biopsy. Uh, what celiac does is it's an autoimmune disease and it, and it flattens the lining of your small intestine. So the lining of your small intestine sort of has these finger-like projections and those get flattened or eroded and uh, then you malabsorb your food and can have a lot of digestive problems. It can lead to cancer. It can create a whole host of problems because of course if you're not absorbing what you're eating, it's very hard for the body to function optimally. And again, it's autoimmune, so your own immune system is attacking the lining of your small intestine. So um, one of the tests that can be used to diagnose celiac disease is an intestinal biopsy, where they go in and they take little pieces of that lining to see what's the status of, of the lining. Is it intact? Is it normal or not? So the father of that um, classification system is Dr. Marsh, so they call it the Marsh classification system, uh, whereby, so if you've had a biopsy, you'll be sort of graded on Marsh 0, 1, 2, 3, and um, Dr. Marsh was uh, interviewed a few years ago by talk, Dr. Tom O'Brien, and it was very, very interesting. He's an elderly man now, he's from England, and his classification system has been around since the 80s, but he shared that his, that his system and his intention of how to grade uh, what was happening inside the in intestine was misinterpreted and has been misused. And even though he tried on a couple of occasions to speak in front of groups and, and, and get this classification system uh, interpreted correctly or understood correctly based on his research, it was not. So what's happened is that um, you can have a fully normal intestinal lining, which of course is, is what we want. And then um, the, the early stages are inflammation, so there's irritation happening. And then um, you, there can be something called lymphocyte infiltration. So the white blood cells are infiltrating because of this inflammation. And then you get, um, over time, you get this degradation that occurs. So there's this spectrum. Dr. Marsh was interviewed and said, as soon as you've left the marsh zero, which means perfectly normal, he feels you should avoid gluten, which is not at all what's done in, in our society. It's waited until those little finger-like projections are gone, which is called villus atrophy, and then you're told uh, you have celiac disease and you shouldn't eat gluten. And so um, Dr. Marsh's data is, is really very key because he feels that um, while 1% of the population has the villus atrophy, so that advanced Marsh, cla Marsh classification system, which is what we're told about 1% of the population has celiac, he feels that a full 30% fall within the parameter of abnormal, meaning they should avoid gluten. 
This is huge, but it's not really talked about other than this interview that Dr. O'Brien uh, did with Dr. Marsh several years ago, and, and then Dr. Marsh making some, you know, trying to make some inroads, and, and as I said, he's an elderly gentleman. I think he's in his 80s now, so um, his, his voice has unfortunately kind of fallen on deaf ears, but I'm trying to make sure that <laughs> we, we, more of us hear it. Um, and then there are several research uh, studies that corroborated what he found. Um, Dr. Ludwigson is somebody who's, who's very, very active in the field of gluten and um, celiac and gluten sensitivity research, and he found that um, he, he followed people who had this inflammation in their intestines but no atrophy, right, so not that advanced, and they had a mortality rate even higher than those with the atrophy. Now, was the mortality rate higher because the patients didn't know they should stop eating gluten? I don't know, but that's what he found as far as the inflammation being a problem. Um, there was a Finnish researcher that found that uh, antibodies, so the, bo the body's immune system saying, wow, I don't, I don't like this thing called gluten, which we look for in the blood test that we do, that can precede atrophy seven years. Um, so there's this long runway and long period of time where we're really missing jumping on this problem and preventing more autoimmune disease, preventing cancer. Uh, it, it affects the body in a lot of different ways. So um, just a little sneak peek to our upcoming book. And the reason we keep talking about this is that we keep finding the most miraculous changes in people's health who never knew gluten was a problem and, and we find it to be so uh, in the comprehensive blood test that we use. So um, this is a test that just doesn't just look for celiac, it looks for gluten sensitivity because it's looking at that big protein gluten and saying, do you, do you have any problem, you know, asking your immune system, do you have any problem with, with this big protein called gluten? And uh, so it asks the question in a number of different ways and when positive, um, you got to eliminate that gluten. It makes a huge, huge impact on your health. So I hope you enjoyed this sneak peek. I'll tell you more about uh, the book and what's upcoming and a few more sneak peeks are in the offing. Uh, in the meantime, if your health is not the way you want it to be, please reach out. We're happy to meet with you, do a consultation. So give us a call 408-733-0400 or contact the website rootcausemedicalclinics.com. I'll see you soon.